I want us to put our hearts together and welcome the messenger of God this afternoon, the, the, the person the Lord has sent with your message to come and deliver it to you. So it is upon you to receive your message. And therefore, I want to, us to put our hearts together as we welcome our speaker, Jennifer Karina, to come and deliver God's word. Together with all what I have said, Jennifer is a believer. She's a dear sister in the Lord. And this afternoon, she's coming to you in the name of the Lord. Because she has a message for you. We want you to know we have received you together with all that you are, the package you are, as the prophet of God on this altar to deliver the message. We have come, we are listening, and we know it is our moment of visitation. One more time, put your heart together and welcome her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm excited about being here. I think I was here like 12, 10 years ago. The church was not this way. It was a wooden structure somewhere. And I'm excited to see that you have moved with much grace and excellence. Give your neighbor a high five and say, Jenny says hi. All right. I also want you to ask your neighbor as you stand up, what is your expectation this afternoon? I trust you have an expectation. I trust you are here because you know you shall receive. I trust that you are here because you know that the Lord will never let you go, that he will always be able to bring you back home. Doesn't matter what it is that you have gone through, so let us pray. And so, dear Father, we thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be able to be here and to bring your word. Thank you for anointing me as a minister of the gospel and that this afternoon I will deliver a message of healing beyond betrayal, but most importantly, that you will be amplified even in this season and in this message. I pray that the seed that will be planted shall germinate and that it will bring healing, growth, and evolution even to those that receive it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord is good. And all the time. Very good. I am excited about being here one more time. Sunday afternoon is family time. That's when I connect with my husband, my children, my grandchildren. And so today is a special day that I, in the midst, I can see my children, I can see my grandchildren. Aha, uh -huh. I haven't seen my husband, but um, I have seen some brothers. And so I have a different family this afternoon. Thank you very much. I honor the men of God of the house, led by Bishop Jimmy Kemani, uh, his uh, beautiful uh, first lady here, Alice. And um, each one of you that is a leader, uh, for your excellence. Actually, I was very impressed, even after Grace. Grace is a good friend of mine. And so when she invited me, I asked her, why are you inviting me so early? I cannot know what will happen in June. But she pressed on me. I said, all right, let's just say that the Lord is going to do this. So I'm excited that I committed and that I was available. Now, so we are going to be speaking about healing beyond a betrayal. And even as we speak about healing beyond betrayal, allow me to let you know that uh, healing beyond betrayal is something I've experienced firsthand. 
If you haven't experienced betrayal, believe me, it is coming. It is on its way. So begin to prepare yourself because you'll say, ah, oh, the message is not mine. I don't belong to those that are betrayed. Let me tell you, sooner than later, you will experience a level of betrayal. The difference between you and somebody else is that your level of betrayal may be at a threshold of two out of 10, and for the other person, it may be at a threshold of nine out of 10. If there's something I know about betrayal, it is absolutely mind-blowing. It is regrettable, and even if we look in the scriptures, we will be able to see it's not just us that get betrayed. Jesus himself was betrayed by those that were closest uh, to him. And so I believe that every individual needs to live purposefully, love passionately, and thrive unapologetically because you deserve it. And that was what God intended for you uh, when he created you. And so this afternoon, we are having a conversation on healing beyond betrayal. It's a journey that you have to be very conscious about. And yes, the theme uh, for, for the church this year is redigging and repossessing the wells. And, and so what can I be able to say? Because even your forefathers had to redig and repossess their wells. So question is, what has been taken away uh, from you? Are you struggling in any area of your life? I don't know about you, but <clears throat> as I was preparing myself for this message, it kind of pricked a bit of pain here and there for any of the areas that I had gone through uh, betrayal. And one of the things that I was reminded was a story of Joseph of the Bible. And Joseph, the son of Jacob, really went through so much pain, so much betrayal at different st stages in his life. And so we'll be looking at that in just a little bit. But the question is, what betrayal have you experienced? Have you experienced any betrayal? As a young woman, or as a young girl, my parents were busy. My, husband, my, my, my father then was a banker, and in, it was just during the colonial days that he became a banker, so he was the first African bank manager with Barclays Bank. So you can see he was somebody who had raised the corporate ladder, and he needed to spend a lot of time at work. My mother was a teacher, and while my mother was a teacher, she needed to spend time, uh, you know, at, at school, uh, marking the exams and everything. And so, with my six siblings, we kind of made them feel that they wanted to do something that would make them parent us better. And so, they came up and with this plan of taking us to boarding school. My sister, we were three sisters then and two brothers at that time. Each one of us were taken to the boarding school. And I was the firstborn at that time. We were the five of us. So between standard one to standard five, we were all in boarding school. But I began in standard four. Who is here? Who is a standard four? student. Standard one, two, three, four. Do we have those ones? Or who went to boarding school in standard one, standard two, standard three, standard four? By a show of hands. I see you there. I see you there. I see you there. I see you there. Makes me feel better because I went through rejection. I mean, how can it be possible that my parents do not want me at home? <clears throat> how, <coughs> excuse me. Over the night, it's not what you do. 
I was privileged those days to enter into a Land Rover with a driver to take me where I needed to go. Over the night, you are locked up in this space called boarding school with many beds up, down, up, down, and without mommy, without daddy. That was hard. And I thought that I, didn't, I wasn't loved. I felt it was their way of just getting rid of us so that they can have their full life. I hated boarding school. I never liked boarding school at any one time. But time passed. Before I knew it, I was done with boarding school. And the next thing that happened was that I knew the one thing I needed was to get out of home because I didn't know my parents anyway. At the end of the day, if you spend the time in boarding school, you come home during the holidays, and it's just rules. When it was all over, the first thing I did was find me a man. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I got a real drop, got dead gorgeous one. I got married. And so I walked down the aisle at All Saints Cathedral. Tan, tan, ta -dun. I was only 19 years. Tan, tan, ta -dun. Because I was running from home. I didn't want to be a part of this home. And so I went home and I got this drop dead gorgeous husband that everybody saw other than me. He came home when he wanted to. I got three children by the time I was 23 years. I was feeling like I can't do this message. All the pain started coming to me. I said, Lord, what is this about betrayal? I've been betrayed by my parents. Here my husband is betraying me. Little did I know that friends will betray me too. Oh my goodness, help me somebody. Have you ever been betrayed by a friend? I'm coming down. Uh-huh. I need someone to talk here. Have you ever been betrayed by a friend? Have you? One of the things that I came to learn, people are not always happy with you when you want to climb back. You want to become the reverend? What's your problem? You want to go to school? What's your problem? Why are you working so hard? Why are you studying Jenny? Where do you want to go? Huh? You already have a successful husband. Where are you going? Stay with us. I said, ah, ah, I know what I want. It's not about being called Mrs. So-and-so. I want a name for myself. I want to create a life for myself. And my friends didn't like me anymore. Why? Because I wasn't available for them because I was becoming too smart for them, because I was not their nyam, Mama Jambi anymore. Do you know what is Mama Jambi? Huh? That is your mistress in waiting. Mm -hmm. The mistress in waiting becomes the master. Alice, I've stepped on your feet, I have climbed the ladder, and you can't take it anymore. So what happened? The little girl began to grow. The little girl began to shine. Oh my God. Left, right, center, betrayal. Help me somebody. So I was reminded of the story of Joseph. And this is what happened to Joseph. Joseph was challenged as a result of simply talking about his dream. I have a dream. I want to grow. I want to become somebody. I want to change the world. One person at a time. Actually, they all thought I had lost my mind. I have been around the world. I serve fam fast families around the world. I serve the poorest people around the world. I am likable from the bottom to the top. Why? I sought for it. Even those that never believed in me, they thought that I was becoming boastful. I want to become. What do you want to become? Joseph knew that his brothers are going to be bowing down. His father 
everybody, they didn't believe it. So what did they conspire to do? What did they conspire to do? Now, it's not just a physical death. It can be an emotional death, a spiritual death. Because when you go through all this pain, it blows your mind. So you may be sitting here, you have actually experienced a death. You are in the living dead. You are in a tomb. Jesus was in the tomb for three days. I say to you, it's time to quit being in the tomb. The stench is too much. You need to take time and get out of this space. Many times we want to be there. It feels comfortable actually being in the tomb. Do you know why it feels comfortable? It feels comfortable because you can just feel good about being miserable. That is called a victim mentality. Do you have a victim mentality? Are you a codependent? Are you always cynical and critical about what's going on in your life? Are you always thinking that you are the one who is most challenged? I wonder where you are at. I only want to let you know, if you thought that you are the only one that is struggling, ask your neighbor what they are struggling with. Everybody struggles with one thing or the other. Even success is a struggle. Even success is a struggle. Every day you have to determine the kind of life that you want to live because it's never that easy. All right? Now, Joseph's brothers conspired to kill him. Then they figured out he's not worth, it's not worth having the blood in our hands. Let's just dump him. No, let's sell him off. And he was sold off. And Joseph became very successful wherever he was, all right? So sometimes when we are going through the challenge of what it is that we are experiencing, we have no idea what the Lord has in store for us. You are struggling in your relationships. I don't care. It's your brothers. It's your husband. It's your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your whoever. Say to yourself, bring it on. Because after this valley, my mountain is coming. Okay? The caravan is coming. It's going to take you to your destiny. Nobody, ask any successful person, they have a story. Ask any successful preacher, they will tell you they were even thrown out of a church. Aha. Uh -huh. They had a ministry that was killed. They decided to move on and start the ministry elsewhere. The caravan, tell your neighbor, the caravan is coming. And it's going to take you into the land of plenty where opportunities were going to be given, uh, will be given unto you. When Joseph got to, uh, you know, wherever he did get to, and Potiphar gave him an opportunity, yet another challenge comes his life. The next challenge that came to his life is that that 17-year-old young man grew to be a hunk, like some of those I see around here. Uh -huh. And so what happened? Potiphar's wife looked and said, hey, babes, come with me. Mm -hmm. But because Joseph knew who he serves, says, I can see the beauty. I can see everything. But what will I say to my God? Because of my God, I am not going to accept what it is. But before he knew it, it was not just about him accepting. The next thing that happened was that he flew and the garment in her hand was the evidence. This guy has desired me for a long time and this is what... He just did. I just screamed. And because I screamed, he's run away. He went to jail. Who has borne false witness against you? 
can I see by a show of hands, is there anyone in the house who has gone through some false witness ac uh, accusation about you? Has somebody ever said you've done something which you know you never did? Let me see by a show of hands. Jesus Christ. Isn't it painful? It is the most painful thing that can happen. The first time that I went through a false accusation, it was such a painful one for me. If there is anything that I was raised to be, is a girl of integrity. I am not a person that I cannot claim because I'm a Christian that born again, spirit filled, and heaven bound is the reason that I'm upright. I had a mother who would lift me up with her pinch up from here that even today in her grave, I know she would turn if I did the wrong thing. I was petrified by just the thought of doing the wrong thing and my mother finding out. The one thing I never desired ever in my life was those kind of funny behaviors that I saw in the office. And they came up with a rumor because I was promoted, promoted. You, I, I am never comfortable at Teresa school. I am promoted at every level. And so they, they came up with a, a scandal that it's because I sleep with the bosses. I cried. Let me tell you something. I didn't just cry. I got sick. I was hospitalized. I got pneumonia. I got low blood pressure. How can anyone think of me like this? I was on my deathbed. Let me tell you today, I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you want to think about me. The only person I care about what they think of me is the Jesus, the Lord God, my Father, but not you. You don't care. I don't care whether you're happy that I came. I don't care whether you like the message or not. There is one person I came for today. Absolutely. Now, I will tell you what I discovered. We care too much about what other people think about us. Potiphar did nothing. He was an upright man. He knew he cannot touch the woman of who has honored him and given him a job. He also knew he cannot do this because he serves a mighty Lord. But the wife put him in jail for something. I think it was 13 years or so he served for something he never did. Question is, what are you struggling with? What are you caring about what your neighbors think? What you eat and drink? Who you are seeing and where you choose to be is your own business. I came to give somebody freedom today. I came to say to you someone, let it go. Let it go. Because God knows your heart. Who cares about anybody else? That was the biggest lesson that I ever learned. And even today, I continue to learn. It hurts when people choose to bear false witness. But my question is, if people don't talk about you, you are done now. You're useless. You're not doing. If you grow fat, they will say, she doesn't think anymore. All she does is eat. If you grow thin, they will say, ha, she has HIV AIDS. Did you know? Whatever you do, it is bad. You wear a long dress. Uh -huh. You wear a short one. You start saying, ha. She wants to show off her legs. Oh my God, talk to me somebody. There is nothing that you will do that will not find criticism. Okay? And so give yourself permission today. You are fearfully and wonderfully created in the image of your God. Absolutely. And you are not here to please man. You are here to please God. And he will honor you at the end of the day. Okay? He will honor you at the the end of the day. Why are you dating? And somebody just 
Stop picking up the calls. You didn't do anything. Have you ever lost a friend and you really don't know what happened? You had such a good time. A girlfriend, a boyfriend, and they just went cold on you. You try to reach out, you are blocked. You wonder, what did I do or what did I not do? Listen to me and listen to me good. The season is over. There's a, there a, a, a season and there's a time and a season for everything under heaven, even in terms of relationships. Do you know that sometimes God just takes away those toxic relationships out of your life? You don't have to fight with anyone. They just fade away and they disappear. You don't need to speak. You just find that they have become so hostile, you don't know what you did. And they walk away. So whether you walk away, they walk away, say, thank you, Jesus. You are the one that ordains my footsteps, and you are the one who knows my destiny. Are we good? Media, let's have on the screen where are we at. Aha, uh -huh, we are doing well. So, move from happy to serve you. I, I serve at Anchor Relationship Network. That is where we provide psychosocial support, uh -huh, leadership, talent development, all those things. We deal everything wellness, all right? We work with insurance companies, and uh, we provide you all holistic wellness. We are very passionate about supporting teams, uh, individuals, couples, and families live uh, the life of their dreams and achieving holistic success that's what we do as a team every single day all right i've authored some books and i feel you today so i've decided that i'm going to give you a 50 percent discount on the books and so uh-huh make sure you take a book home make sure you take a book home healing beyond betrayal marriage built to last and the marriage built to last is not about marriage only. It's about dating and courtship. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, it is right here. Marriage built to last is also for the singles. Dating and courtship begins right here. It also talks about self-esteem, attitude. All right. The big decision, how can I make the decision that I want to settle down so that you settle down with the right person? Okay, so that's it. Now, when I did marriage built to last, I came on a very idealistic way. I only knew that there were only my problems which were involved, and so I wrote, including all the problems I had experienced, and I tell you, uh, by the age of 30, being married at 19, by 30, I was ready for another husband, another life, but not this one. Thank God, 45 years, we celebrated 45 years of marriage last, uh, in, November, in December last year. Uh -huh. And so, we have done well. We have raised some children, show the photo. We have raised some serious children who can also come here and minister to you and that you would love it. Rina Hicks, Money Wise, How to Create, Grow, and Preserve Wealth. Okay, there is my family right there. Everyone is a powerhouse there. They will minister to you in every area concerning the family. All right? It didn't take me long to know that it, these relationships are so challenged, so I wrote another book, Healing Beyond Betrayal. And in this book, it cites 10 very complicated cases that I encountered with, with the permission of those people that I wrote that, and we have a workbook, journal, and all that. I am very passionate. I would give you this for free, but one of the things I was, I, I was quick to learn, people don't appreciate free things. So you buy it at 50% and enjoy the read. All right, so I went ahead of myself, media next. I went ahead of myself and we kind of touched on the betrayal. I'll just touch on this. Now, betrayal is painful. It triggers the feelings of anger, sadness, fear, guilt, shame, anxiety, depression, loneliness, rejection, 
and you just want to revenge now. If I'm feeling all these things, you want to revenge. That is how you feel about it. So it's okay. I want to give you permission to look at yourself in the mirror tonight and say what you are feeling. It is important to recognize your emotion because it's valid. Emotions are data. They speak words about what it is that you are experiencing. And if you do not accept what you are experiencing, then you will struggle and you will find yourself entering into depression and post-traumatic stress disorder. So acknowledge what it is that you are feeling and be able to move on um, with that. Now, the saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from your enemies. It never comes from your enemies. It comes from those you love, that you care deeply for, and those that you trust and believe in the most. And that's what we have just been uh, looking at and speaking about. And I just want somebody to share. Have you gone through broken trust, unmet expectations, loss of our loved ones, empty promises or broken promises? Do we have somebody that has experienced that? Relieve to your hand and let the mic go to you. Am I the only one that has gone through betrayal? I know you too have. It can be a betrayal of whatever kind, but it will be a form of betrayal. What is it that you have gone through when it comes to betrayal? Acknowledging is the first step of healing. Acknowledging that you have gone through betrayal. You've got to acknowledge that I have been betrayed. Even when a promise, I met a young man who had been promised by his father that when he does pass his standard eight, he's going to be bought a bicycle. He passed with flying colors. The father shifted the gear and said, that's fine now. When you pass your O level, I'll buy you a mountain bike. Forget this one. So he wasn't bought. When it reached his O level, he worked so hard, he passed with A's, and his father didn't buy him the, the mountain bike. He was so sad about the fact that he was never bought the mountain bike, he spoke to an uncle, like this one, and said, my uncle, you know my father promised me a mountain bike, he never bought me. And the uncle said, come on Saturday, I will buy you that bike. So he was bought a nice mountain back with gears all over, gears, and, and it was brought home. So daddy comes home in the evening, and the bike is there, asks, where is this from? Said daddy, you know you didn't buy me a mountain bike, so I asked Uncle Jimmy if he can buy me, and he bought me. And the blows and the kicks, that bike should be returned where it came from, not in my house. This was a young man, married with children. He was crying like a child, and I was wondering, just because of a bike? Let me tell you, promises. You tell your children, I'll take you for swimming. My children remember the aunties that made empty promises. She always told us, get ready, I'm coming to pick you. We are going for swimming. They never came. Till today, their mothers, their parents of their own children, they still remember. Let's have somebody share. Let us share. I might just live here thinking I'm the only one that has gone through all the betrayal in my life. Even if you're young, you're, you're, whatever your age is, it shall be. Good. Let me see a show of hand. Someone here. Let's just have a conversation. Hmm? In 1976, I acted in a movie <laughs> in West Pokot. 
I was the cost steering. Steering? Cost steering. Asante ni watu wakimombo mumenioko hapo. Mwaota kutoma ajari yegi kuyo. Anyway, so, and uh, we did very well. That movie opened a door for me to go to Sweden. I have carried a weight in my heart, and thank you. Mwalimu, unajua sasa umeanza ni Toboe Siri. Even now I still ask, what wrong did I do? The company that uh, I co-starred, uh, they, they are from Sweden. So they bought me some equipment to come and do evangelism. Hata sasa, si jaipata. Na huyo mzungu alifariki kitambo. Lakini leo eh Mrs. Karina akiongea pale nikakumbuka. Oh, no wonder ninastukaga wakati mwingine nikiambalia nikiangalia vyombo. I'm there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Clap for him better. Somebody here. The beautiful girl with braids. You're looking at me. We'll come to you. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Uh, that, is, that is an ambush. <laughs> but me, the betrayal I've faced is from friends. Uh, I was at a low moment. I... As in, I felt they didn't, they were not there when I needed them. Yeah. All of them mm. left me at that moment. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Friends, when you need them the most, they are not present. They, they are not present when you need them the most. When they need you, you are always there. All right. Go ahead. I was in class five. Nikiwa darasa la stano, la sita. Na kulikuwa karibu, likuwa naenda shule. Na ma, my dad was, alikuwa na kizima. So, my, alikuwa friend, alikuwa friend wa my dad. So, alikuwa na watoto. Na kamtoto kadobu. Kasijana, na kaflana. So, waliomba maji wakakuja kuchota ile maji then wakakuja kuonga ile maji ikiwa pale so wakani wa, wa, waka tukaenda tulikuwa nasoma shule moja then nikaenda shule nilipoenda shule yule msichana akasema huyu 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 kijana mimi sasa akasema mimi nili nilimuona akiwa ana ana nguo na alimbivu vibaya so sasa hiyo kind nikapanishwa vibaya i betrayed nikakuwa very discouraged mungu ambariki thank you thank you for sharing clap for him clap for him grace there is a lady here who wants to share even as she shares uh, we will be looking at how you experience the loss in that. Right here. Right here. Ah, okay. Oh, praise God. Uh, so, when I was in Form 1, I, I had a deskmate who was handicapped. And uh, she was a really lovely lady. I'm a very easy to engage so she became my friend and she sat next to me as my deskmate and uh, i started playing basketball and when in form one when i was in the pitch someone asked you guys are choosing prefects so who are you going to choose i said definitely people would choose Hafswa because that's my deskmate everybody loves her people would definitely choose her by then we were not choosing prefects because they are good or what it's just who is popular and i just felt like she'd be the right person but 
a friend of mine, I studied in Kapsabet, so most of my classmates were Kales, and we were very few lawyers or Luos. So a friend of mine we came from home with. So Najua, she's from my area, Kakamega. So she was a really good friend. She went and told Hafswa that Mimi ni mesema ati eya na jipendekeza kwa watu anataka kuwe prefect. So I have no clue. Mimi nendelea kuka na deskmate wangu. I'm talking to her. Then one day she just moved. She starts to the next alkakama lipengine. Sasa ni nakaa mbele and I'm sitting alone. So I'm like, what did I do? So people are just like, oh, talking behind the back. I have no idea the story is going on. Nothing. I'm just talking to her. I'm like, how are, you? how are you? Are you good? Why have you left? She's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. So one evening, to our preps, uh, people are like, what wengine, you know those from one for high school things. Ati what wengine mnapenda kuongelea watu vibaya, siji nina nini, kama mnipendi, mseme, siji I know I'm handicapped, but you do not have to talk. Ah. So me, I'm like, what's going on? You know, I'm also eager to know what's happening. Apparently, I'm the story and I don't even know. So, you know, people in high school, they're like, we sema, ni nani, sema, sema. Hey. So we are chilling. I'm just like, okay, who's this person who has really offended Hafswa? You know, she's my desk mate. Like, she's a nice girl. Hey. So people what me push, or me push, and then they're like, sema, sema, sema. After saying, I'm less like, I'm I was just like, what? When? Where? Mm -hmm. What did I say? No one gave me the chance to talk. No one spoke to me. Everybody thought I'm a very bad person. And it just made me be very cautious about people. Mm. I naturally don't talk about people because of that. For good or for bad. When they're not there, I don't. I just kept away. And they all kept away from me because Thank they thought you. I was a very bad person. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing. We will clap for her. All right. We'll stop right there. Thank you so much for all sharing. The one thing that happens, we will share later. Once I'm done, we'll have question, answer, com comment session. So we are not going to share at the moment because time is going. But allow me to let you know that what happens regardless of when, whether you, you have been betrayed or whether you are feeling a sense of loss, you will go through a process of loss and grief. Because you've lost something. You've lost your dignity, you, you know, in whatever that has been said. You've lost a friend in whatever that has happened. You have lost something. So it doesn't matter what it is that you are losing, you will experience a level of pain. And the first thing that is going to happen when you realize that you've been either betrayed or lost is a, the loss of trust, particularly. So when you have the loss of trust, you can choose to be that codependent and that victim mentality for the rest of your life. It's a comfort zone. Today, at the end of the day, when we get individuals and counsel them, one of the things that they always talk about is how other people have broken their trust how uh, they have not met their expectations, how they have not met the reality of it. But remember the story of Joseph. I don't remember any lamentation in that story. He just embraced the season whichever came and he did the best that he could be able to do to be able to move on and climb the ladder. He just kept moving. So the choice is yours. Do you want to lament on a daily basis about what was done for you? Yes. I told you, even as I went through this, the betrayals became alive. And I told God, this is an experience. I guess you put us through this pain so that we can be a blessing to others, but not to be crying and, and just being cynical and critical at the end of the day. So when you go through loss and grief, you go through number one, you go through shock. I can't believe this is happening to me. You can't believe it. How can anyone? It's a roller coaster of emotions. How can this be happening to me? 
All right? The next thing that happens is a situation of denial. It didn't happen. You wake up every day. Then you become angry. And you begin to bargain even with God. Do something here. I have served you. I've lived for you. Do something, God. Prove yourself. Then if it's not working, anger levels go high, then you can go through uh, depression. But the joy is, at the end of the day, it does find its home, finally. You go through a place of replacement. Somehow, you might never be able to replace. Last October, I was out of the country. A young man that I raised since he was seven years, a, a son of my sister who was given to me, I raised him. And my children now, they had gone, gone, they are out of home, and I'm busy, they are studying abroad, they are here. I have a son. I loved having him, the only child in the house. I spoiled him as much as I could, but he had high levels of discipline. October the 30th, he was walking home, just up the neighborhood. He was accosted by border border riders. And they wanted his laptop, which he had carried, and his phone. He gave the phone. He refused with his laptop. He was an IT professional, so I know his laptop is very important to him. But I guess we never really had those conversations because he was not on the road alone many times. And so I got a call. I woke up to a message. Call home the minute you see this message. And they simply said, he's dead. They killed him with one knife through his heart. Oh my God. I was like, God, where are you? I pray for these children every night. He's walking home. He's not in the club. He's done nothing wrong. How can anybody kill him? I was so sad. I had to make an intentional decision that it's not going to bring me down. Because I was sleeping with Keegan, I was waking up with Keegan, I was like feeling like a total failure. What kind of betrayal is this? Simple men choose to take away the life of my child. Huh? Educated him in the best schools. Just when he's ready to bring sugar home and bring a wife and grandchildren, he's gone. I was angry. I was crying. And somebody says, ah, things work for good for them that love the Lord. I mean, tell me another one. Don't tell me that. Let me tell you, when it is your time to cry, cry all you want. It is okay to mourn. There are some betrayals that will bring you down. That's why you have the counselors here in the church that are going to support you. You've got to seek for help and you've got to say, I need support. You will need that support. I never knew that I will wake up not thinking about Keegan and not crying. And this is what happened. I put on my bedside that song to sing every morning, automatic. Let me tell you, there is no formula to death. My father died at the age of 90. I was sad. I'd lost my father. The memories of my father and the fact that I'll not go home and see him. Home lost her meaning. My mother is not there. My father is not there. This is the home I grew up. It's not the same going to visit. And so every morning, the song would sing, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. One day at a time. I stopped thinking about what will happen tomorrow. You know, when you think about tomorrow too much, you're living in anxiety. When you think about what happened to you in the past, I married the wrong person, I got children that disturbed me, I joined a church that I'm not happy in, I have not been given the privilege of service. When you think about the past too long, it means you're living in depression. You need to live the here, and now and dance in the moment dance in that life is good what are you mourning about the past and what are you anxious about the future who told you you will be there in that future serve in the present dance in the present 
and do what you need to do in the present. All right. May I hear an amen? amen. The Lord is good and all the time. It's, and that is his nature. It's all about being very aware and conscious of post-betrayal transformation. And so I'm now coming with the solutions. So recognize about wellness is all about mind, body, spirit, your worldview, and the climate that you bring into your space. What climate did you bring into the church this afternoon? When I ask about the climate, it's all about your energy levels. What is the energy that you are bringing here? Are you bringing negative energy? I did know that even in the church we had those people, they always bring negative energy. Hmm? Are you one of those ones that are cynical and criticizing everything? That is called catabolic energy. Say after me, catabolic energy. Critical, cynical, complaining. Bure kabisa. We don't need you. You go to another church if this is what you do here every day. But I will tell you this. Even where you go, you still do the same thing. Critical, cynical, everything. Everybody is bad other than yourself. Do you know what is the problem? You're depressed, sweetheart. Did you know that one in every four people, according to the World Health Organization, will be struggling with mental health challenges? Stress, anxiety, alcoholism, substance uh, uh, addiction, uh -huh. depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, more complicated psychotic situations. Okay? So it's not about what happens to you. It is how you rise up from the ashes. It's not what happened to Jacob. It is how he braved himself. Siblings sent him for death, sold him away. Where he went, he excelled because your attitude shall determine your altitude. Where you go, you will go, not because of the circumstances in your life, but the attitude that you choose to adapt. All right. So, so you will purpose for your wellness. Next slide. I want us to just have a short conversation on how you can be able to aspire for greatness and be able to become somebody okay so i will use the word aspire and as i use the word aspire it's called an acronym what did jenny say when she came she said that we should aspire for greatness all right now as you aspire for greatness as you aspire for greatness i want to say to you it is the choice that you make Betrayal, you will be betrayed. Loss and grief, you shall experience. Bad things, they will come to good people. But the end of the day is, what attitude shall you adapt? As you aspire for greatness, which is what the example of Joseph, you can read that story at your own time. You, the A stands, awaken the giant within you. Everybody has greatness in them. Everybody has greatness, and this greatness is within you. So you've got to awaken the giant within you. Am I talking to somebody? What do you need to do, beloved? What do you need to do to awaken the giant? What is it that you need to do? We'll be talking about it in just a while. Aspire. You've got to have a level of self-love. Put them all on the screen. Self-love. You've got to have a level of self-love. You've got to be passionate about what it is that you do. You've got to have influence and impact. And you've got to rise above your circumstances and evolve. Mm -hmm. These are the six keys I am giving you. You take this home and you will be dangerous. 
God being on your side, you will conquer mountains. You will conquer the valleys. You will conquer every territory because you know what it is that you have. You are fearfully and wonderfully created. Too marvelous for words. God has said in his word, he's got a good plan for your life. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. But you choose to wallow in self-pity because that's where you love it. You love it because of the attention that you get each time. You love it because somebody's licking your wounds. You love being a victim. It's a good place to be. But allow me to let you know, you will never amount to anything. Who cares what it is that you've gone through? If I never told you what I've went through as a young girl, what I went through as a young wife, what I went through as an adult, would you ever know? You would never know. And so what I've come to learn, nobody cares about your pain. They need to get again from connecting with you. If you're one person who will always be talking about what didn't happen, what should have happened, and what went wrong, you will find yourself alone. People don't care about that. People want to hear good news, what happened, where we were. So awaken, awaken. Let's see awaken. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what the life is about to do in your life, beloved. You've got to own that for yourself. And you have to desire it for yourself. When people say that will amount to nothing, when they saw me go back to school and waste all the time instead of doing whatever, they call me all kind of names. Finally, I had to make a decision. I told them, let me tell you, you will see the dust. The dust... <sighs> Let me say it in my vernacular so that you can get it. I said to them, Kegwere, Nero Kogoro Akwa Murio Naga. Aha, Nero Kogoro Murezo Maga Gazeti. I never knew, tell your neighbor what I've said. I never knew that that was going to be the reality. This little silly girl would be in the newspaper to do what? I was in every newspaper. And I was even given a column to do every Saturday to write a column in the newspaper. I was in TV for five years on NTV every Tuesday morning. I was in Kameme five years. I had to say, mm -mm, I need a pause and to say, what does the Lord want me to go from here? I say to you, beloved, let's say this together. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived, what the Lord is about to do in my life. Claim it for yourself. Absolutely. I claimed this for myself. As I was doing this message, I said, Lord, you are amazing. Those that didn't want to see me, they switched the TV in their house. Oh my God, she's here again. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, your enemies are the best thing. God shall lay a table for you in the midst of your enemies. And if you don't have an enemy, what is your motivation? How will you shine for Christ? How will they know that you serve a mighty God? Am I talking to somebody? All right, let's go to the other one. <clears throat> okay, self-love. You know, the pastor can love you all you want. The bishop can love you all you want. Your parents can love you all you want. Everybody can love you all you want. Your boyfriend will love you all you want. Yan, he'll be telling you, babes, I can't do without you. Uh -huh. Flee if somebody tells you, I can't do without you. Because they, those ones, they'll kill you. Because when you don't do the right thing, my God, you're done. If you are being told, I cannot do without you, it simply means you are dating a codependent, somebody that is sucking, somebody that is, a, you know, sucking onto your energy, and soon you will be dying. I say to you, beloved, give yourself some love. Love the Lord with... Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. It needs to begin with you. If you don't know how to love me, how do you know how to love your neighbor and how to love the other person? So you got to begin there. All right. And so, self-love. Awaken the giant within you. Self-love. It is only you who knows what you need to do. Uh -huh. The P is about passion. Mm -hmm. Passion. I'm passionate about what I do. I can walk to any place just to be able to give a message. I will wake up in the night to prepare my message. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will prepare myself. My calendar is full. My peers cannot believe. Jenny, can we play golf tomorrow? Tomorrow is Monday. Someone wants us to play golf. I looked at my calendar. It's full. Monday is supposed to be my rest day. But I said, if we really have cases that I need to see, just put them out. And so I had to write and say, I will not be available. And they are like, Jenny, you are your own boss. Cancel it all. Believe me, what I love to do is change lives. One person at a time. Now, they think I have lost my mind, but I am living in my element. I am living in my passion. I have found my element. Have you found your element? Are you living in your passion? Or are you living to be a people pleaser? You are such a people pleaser, you please everybody in your life apart from yourself. Passion is in your work, remain steadfast in your love for the Lord, then you will find success. You will never find success if, if whatever you do is not aligned to what the Lord desires of you. All right, the I is simple and it is all about influence in everything that we do beloved we do it so that we can have influence and impact that's why you exist in the absence of that then you are just beating the water there is nothing you're doing influence is the ability to produce an effect upon others and if you want influence beloved remember that how can two work together if they are not aligned evil company corrupts character all right i didn't say that that's first corinthians 15 uh, 33 to 34. the r uh-huh is for rise i came to speak to somebody and say i know that you have been betrayed i know that it hurts i know that you are stuck I know that you have begin, begun to self-doubt yourself. I know that you are doing self-sabotage. But I came to say to you, rise above your circumstances. Rise above your situation. Because God is doing a new thing. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition or thanksgiving make your requests be known to god and the peace of god that surpasses every human understanding shall guard your heart and your mind in christ jesus all right and so don't be anxious it is a season all right and finally we come to the e which is evolve mm -hmm. it is evolve don't just sit there do something you can't just do things the way you've always done them you got to find some level of change i'm sure joseph didn't just sit there at potiphar's house doing what he used to do at his father's house he had to learn the environment and to be able to pro provide the leadership that he did I'm sure he sat under the anointing of others so that he grows, evolve. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of the old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Isaiah 43, 18. Aha, next. So we were talking about aspire. Aspire to inspire yourself. Aspire to inspire others. Aspire for greatness. That is why we are here. And we looked at five keys. And let's say the keys together. Put them on the screen so that we don't forget them. Put them on the screen. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Awaken the giant within you. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. If you remember that, your life will never be the same again. Challenges will come. They will go. Betrayal will be here. And I want to tell you, the better you do, the more it is a challenge. As a young woman, when I made my first million, I was so excited. I made my first million. So I shared it in my Bible study group because I was struggling so hard. It was a difficult time and I was really, really, really struggling. They were very happy to give me handouts. But the day I said I have made my first million, I just made some serious enemies. Let me give you some secrets. Don't tell. There are things to speak about. There are things not to speak about. I thought I was in a very safe environment. I was so poor. I was struggling so much. Everything was in a mess. And when I got out of the mess, I thought we would have a party. Let me tell you. You better know who you're telling. <laughs> All right, next. Now, I showed you the photo of my family when we began. Okay? Now I'm showing you the photo of my grandchildren. Uh -huh. These are not my children. They are who? My grandchildren. And you can see my drop dead gorgeous man there. So did we not just have our children? Now we have our grandchildren. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Now, I'm in that season. And I'm telling God, I will not only see my children's children. I will see my children's children's children up to the fifth generation. My mother-in-law has seen these five generations. So I claim it for myself. I want to let you know, when you sit there and brood and cry because of a nobody who is confusing your life, look at your grandchildren and the children of your children's children's children who are coming and say, what am I crying about? Huh? Life is good. There is a future. God has a good plan for me. A plan to prosper me. A plan to give me a future. A plan to give me a hope. These ones, let me tell you, jealousy is in the Bible. We know those that killed the others because of jealousy. How special do you think you are? You have just built a two-bedroom house. Just a two-bedroom house. And now your friend is not talking to you. Are you going to go back to the village so that you keep friendship? No! no. You know what you're supposed to do? Rise above your situation. Evolve and walk with the eagles. Forget the chickens. And they will come back to you. All those that didn't want to see me, they celebrate me today. Because they want to say, Jenny is my friend. You want me to invite her to your church? I will. Okay, I can come for her, with her for your guradio. She will speak and not charge you anything. Let me tell you, your gift will bring you before kings and queens. Don't waste a single moment brooding and crying over nonsense, looking and wondering who loves me. God loves you with an everlasting love. He will never let you fall. He will never slumber. So let me tell you, if you have gone through any form of betrayal, just get up on your feet and I will just say a prayer for you as we bring this session to closure and bring the other part. All right? If you like the message, give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Thank you. The Lord is always faithful. He will never let you sleep. He will uphold you with his righteous right hand. All right, let's pray. And so, Father, we thank you. Because you sent the, your son, Jesus Christ, to walk on the earth. 
He experienced betrayal firsthand. With a kiss, he went through the crucifixion. And Father, it is because of this that he died for our sins, so we have life and have life in that abundance. There's not much that we need to do, Father, to be able to just have a life of grace, peace, and freedom. We just need to acknowledge you as Lord and Savior of our lives so that we can live in freedom. I thank you for these wonderful people. I pray, Lord, that you know them by name because you have said you know them by name. You know their needs. You know their struggles. You know where they are coming from. You know how much their hearts bleed. And Father, I thank you because your word tells us that you will forgive them of their transgressions as far as the east is to the west. It is not because they have sinned. It is because they have refused to come to your altar and say, just as I am. Take me, Lord. Heal me now. Give me a new leaf of life and take away all the pain in my heart. And so, Father, I thank you because you ask that we take a step of faith so that we can receive healing. I know it is not easy. I have experienced firsthand betrayal, but I have also conquered because you have lifted me up with your righteous right hand, and I know for sure. So I say to these, beloved, that fear not, as you have said in your word in Isaiah 41.10, fear not. I am your God. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. May that be their portion or master as they walk through their wilderness and find the land of Canaan. I speak a blessing to each one of them that you will heal their bodies, that you will heal their relationships, that you will heal their financial challenges, that you will heal every situation in terms of relationships and that they will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I pray this believing that you have heard our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we all say it, Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever Amen. God bless you.